you for joining us for Discover NAU. I am grateful for this opportunity to speak with you about becoming part of the Lumberjack family. As you explore educational opportunities, we recognize that you have many choices, and so I want to thank you for considering NAU. Our number one focus is on your success. We offer a unique educational experience centered on your individual passions, ambitions, and preferences. At NAU, you are part of a close-knit community that provides academic and social experiences that will help you discover who you are and what direction you want your life to take. You will also enjoy the beauty of this region and the community of Flagstaff, ranked as one of the top college towns in the country with a great quality of life. We hope that what you learn today will inspire you to bring your aspirations to NAU. Enjoy today's program and go Lumberjacks. Good morning and welcome to Discover NAU. Thanks for joining us for a, another virtual Discover NAU. We had a, a couple of those this spring. Excited that we're able to join all of you joining us from around the country and around the world to learn more about NAU today. Uh, my name is Chad Eikoff. I serve as Director of Admissions here at Northern Arizona University and I'm joined by my colleague Annika. Good morning, my name is Annika Olson and I serve as the Vice President for Enrollment Management here at Northern Arizona University. Certainly back to school has never looked like it does today. We know for you seniors and other high schoolers joining us this morning and you parents, so many adjustments ha have had to be made. We've adjusted here on campus as well, and you can see some of those listed on the screen. We've changed dining and housing to make sure that students stay safe, socially distancing. All masks are required on campus, and our academics look a little different as well. With changing the capacity in many of our academic classrooms, our NAU Flex technology and the amazing faculty here have adjusted to make sure they're delivering the high quality academic experience our students have come to expect. So lots of things look different. Many of the, the pictures and videos we're gonna share with you today were taken pre-pandemic. Never fear, we are practicing social distancing and mask wearing throughout campus, although not all of our video and pictures may show that. So I did wanna make mention of that. We also appreciate you joining us virtually for this Discover NAU, or as we like to call it, DNAU, to learn more about what our campus has to offer. Chad's gonna get us started with sharing a little bit about our academic structure here at NAU. And when we talk about fit at an institution, and really I think Discover NAU is about figuring out if NAU is that right fit for you, uh, there's kind of three types of fit you should be looking for. Academic fit, which we're gonna start talking about academics first, then we're gonna jump into some things to help you determine social fit, if NAU is the right social fit for you. And then lastly, financial fit is what we'll be looking at. So those are kind of three types of fit that you as a student, you as a family should be considering. Starting off with the academic piece of things, uh, we pride ourselves on trying to keep that class size small, that student to faculty ratio, keep that small as well too. And really individual attention and relationships with students and faculty um, with, throughout their educational experience. We have academic, nine different academic colleges, one of those being our graduate college, which we aren't gonna be focusing on uh, specifically today, but we will take a quick look at each of those other eight academic colleges where your nearly 100 undergraduate programs uh, could fall under. Um, to explore that full list, you can certainly visit our, our catalog on the website and find all of our degree programs there, but we're gonna give you kind of a high level view to understand how that all breaks down. I should also mention the, the one NAU component. Uh, NAU does have sites throughout the state of Arizona, as well as uh, online programs as well too. And when we had to shift gears this spring with the pandemic, we were able to quickly adapt to the online method because we've been doing online education for a very long time. 
So we're going to dive into the colleges and start with our College of Arts and Letters. Great. Thanks, Chad. So one thing to make mention of before we jump into all the colleges is to, to understand as a student here, you will be taking classes in probably almost every college through our liberal studies requirements. So although your major may not be listed in this first college of arts and letters, you most likely will be taking at least one or a, a small handful of classes in this college. The College of Arts and Letters is one that houses the traditional college majors from philosophy, history, and English. It also houses our performing arts, theater, and music, as well as art, with students displaying their artwork throughout numerous galleries around campus. Let's go ahead and listen to a, um, a student in the College of Arts and Letters in music education. In the College of Arts and Letters, specifically being a music education major, you have a lot of opportunities to be in music ensembles, and that would include orchestra, band, and choirs. And something really cool about that is if you audition, you can get a lot of scholarship money for just being in them. So great to hear from some of our students. And we're going to be bouncing around to some videos so you really get the flavor of what being a student at each of these colleges is like. So let's head over to Chad to talk to us about our next college, the College of Education. Yeah, our College of Education is certainly a point of pride for us here at NAU. We were founded as Arizona's Teachers College, and to this day, graduate a lot of teachers. Uh, we have CAPE accreditation, which we are the first and only institution in the state of Arizona that has that highly prestigious CAPE accreditation. Really pride ourselves on trying to get students in the classroom early on working with students. Um, but again, we want to let you hear from one of our students. So uh, we're going to hear from Cameron, uh, one of our College of Education students. So the first thing I did was I joined an intramural soccer team because um, I played soccer since I was three years old, um, played competitively in high school. And I wanted to keep that going. I wanted to stay fit in a way that I enjoyed, and that is soccer. Up here, everybody wants to learn. Everybody is excited to learn what they're studying. And then it's just a whole different atmosphere because people can just dive deep into their studies and be passionate about what they're doing um, because they're choosing their path, they're choosing what's going to happen for them down the road, um, and it just makes the environment completely different. So I am an elementary education major with a concentration in foreign language, and my biggest goal in life is to make an impact, and I think teachers are some of the most influential people in a child's life, and they really do make that impact. Um, and in the terms of going into foreign language, uh, when you work in underprivileged schools, a lot of parents um, from Spanish-speaking homes cannot speak English, so having that second language is gonna be really beneficial when it comes to parent-teacher conferences and things like that. And not only can I make an impact on the students, I can make an impact on their parents, too. So I'm taking a class right now, ESC 280, which is um, a class that talks about um, students with special needs. And I grew up with a cousin who had Down syndrome, um, and he was like my best friend growing up. So learning how to work with those kids in schools is gonna be really eye-opening to me because I know how to do it on a social aspect, um, and it might be different because he's family, but learning how to do that on a professional kind of level is gonna be really important for me, and I'm really excited to get into my practicum next semester um, or next year. And I just, I can't wait to like put everything I'm learning into like action and see if this really is the right fit for me. So great to hear from Cameron. I always love watching his video and especially that beginning when he's out playing soccer there on the South Fields. Our next college is the College of Engineering, Informatics, and Applied Science. That just rolls off the Ki tongue. Kiosk, I think we tried to Kiosk, say Kiosk, right? yes. <laughs> So a number of different opportunities for students from day one to really enjoy hands-on learning, taking what they apply and learn in the classroom and using it as they're using that design for practice that all the engineering classes enjoy. Certainly, informatics, computing, and cy cyber systems is an up-and-coming field and has been for a number of years. And our department in, in college um, really has so many great opportunities, internships, externships for students to enjoy. Again, to take what they've learned in the classroom and really apply it. Let's go ahead and hear from Cato on his experience in this college. 
Hi there, my name is Cato with the College of Engineering, Informatics, and Applied Sciences. Most of the programs within this college are ABET accredited, um, so the curriculum itself is very hands-on. The professors are very engaging with their students, and you can tell that they want them to succeed. Um, I'm just very blessed to be a part of such a great college. This is a great time to tell you, if you have questions you would like us to ask students during that panel, we're gonna have a couple of students joining us, if you could email admissions at nau.edu with that question, and we'll uh, be collecting some of those and looking at those and then asking uh, students those questions later on. So again, admissions at nau.edu if you have questions. So next up is our College of the Environment, Forestry, and Natural Sciences. CEFINS is the acronym that uh, we make that into. And forestry is one I wanna draw your attention to. We do have the only forestry program in the state of Arizona. Uh, potentially the only forest, uh, <laughs> debatable there. Um, and we have, because of that, a large uh, university-owned forest where our students are out getting that hands-on experience. One of our other very large programs that we have here on campus is biomedical sciences. And we're gonna have the opportunity to hear from Danielle next now, uh, one of our biomedical science students. So let's hear from Danielle. Hi, so my name is Danielle. I'm from Mesa, Arizona. Um, I'm a junior this year and I'm majoring in biomedical sciences and I'm double minoring in chemistry and sociology and I'm also a student in the Honors College. So I do volunteer at the Flagstaff Medical Center in the emergency department. And it's mainly comprised of just stocking like the IV cards, patient rooms, interacting with patients as well. And from those experiences, I've learned how triage works essentially. So when a patient is first admitted into the hospital, how they're assessed and how certain patients are ranked higher in terms of when the physician will see them. I've learned that whole process, which is great. And there's also opportunities to shadow the physicians at the hospital as well. So I've done that numerous times. I've shadowed multiple phys physicians and I've seen patients that have cancer, some people that just come in for cardiac problems, and I get to see how they're assessed by the physician, what steps they take after that, how the physicians refer them to other specialties, and that's just really opened up my eyes, and it's a great way to put my foot into the door as I am interested in becoming an emergency room physician myself. And then I also do research here with bioinformatics, mainly looking at the TP53 gene in mammals and investigating that with cancer in mammals and humans. I do take a lot of credits every semester and then I also do a lot of off-site involvements and on top of that I am studying for the MCAT exam for medical school. But for de-stressing I love to play with all three of my cats and then I also just do small things that I enjoy so just like playing the violin or reading for like 20 minutes every single night and just like enjoying that like small little bit of time and then I can get back to my priorities and focus on school again. Next is our College of Health and Human Services and certainly now more than ever this college is highlighted. I would also like to take a minute to shout out to all of our healthcare workers in our own community, as well as communities around the country. Your tireless work during this pandemic is certainly not taken for granted. Our College of Health and Human Services has two competitive programs, both nursing and dental hygiene, and other popular programs such as public health and health sciences, just to name a few. Let's go ahead and hear from Alyssa, who's one of our bright stars in the nursing program. I knew you made me feel really at home whenever I connected with this girl down my hall. We were both living in McConnell at the time and she was like two doors away from me and we had a um, hall like dinner at the Dubai Center. So we all went and she was wearing a cheer jacket, like a, her whole a high school cheer jacket. And I was like, oh my God, I cheered. And she was like, I cheered. And so then we connected off of, we both cheered. And we established like a friendship. We were both kind of like scared to go out of our comfort zone and scared to meet new people, but we encouraged 
encourage each other to like go and find new friends and go sit next to people and go to like SI sessions and um, go to the running of the freshmen, which is really fun. I remember me and her both um, were super nervous because we were not ready to run a football field. I had feeling the adrenaline rush and just sitting down in the stands and like feeling like this is what a college football game feels like and like kind of feeling like this is NAU. This is going to be where I'm living for the next four years. So I think at that moment was like very breathtaking for me. The class that I took that really intrigued me into public health and why I wanted to go this direction was um, Anatomy 202, and that's the physiology of the human body. So the digestive system, the respiratory system, the cardiovascular system, and I was just so intrigued by like all of our systems in our body and how they connect and work as one. Um, and it just intrigued me to be like, all of our body works in different ways and no one's gonna be the same. Like all of our bodies are different. Um, but we have one core function, like the cardiovascular systems pretty much similar to everyone. Um, I don't know, I just like, NEU just has like this special like feel to it. Like everywhere I go on campus, like I can feel like I'm connected to someone. If it's like the Chick-fil-A worker or like <laughs> um, walking into like the math lab, like I feel like they're eager that I'm there and that like, how can I help you or that kind of feel. Thank you, Alyssa. Next up, our College of Social and Behavioral Sciences. Lots of very people focused majors psychology, sociology, anthropology, all are going to be within the College of Social and Behavioral Sciences. Theology school. The, the ologies, yes, all of the ologies. Um, also within there is going to be the communication uh, focused thing. So our School of Communication falls under the umbrella of the College of Social and Behavioral Sciences. So student run newspaper, student run radio, student run television. We're in a television studio right now. Um, here on campus. So we're going to have the opportunity to hear now from one of our students who decided on a major within the School of Communications uh, under the College of Social and Behavioral Sciences. So uh, here's Carrington. When I started applying for colleges, I was set on staying in California and my aunt was like, oh, you should check out this school called NAU. I looked at the website and I automatically fell in love with the school based on the website. I don't know what it was, but I signed up for a tour and I came to visit the school and that just made me want to come here even more. And yeah, I came to NAU. So originally I was a public health major. I ended up switching to comm and that was the perfect major for me because if it weren't for that, I wouldn't have found my internship, which I love. I interned with NAU Social and it's basically, we help run as interns the social media for the school. And we get to go to a lot of events and we get to get content. And sometimes I get to write blogs, which is fun. That's my favorite part. And we just, it's a little family that I got on campus. So definitely don't limit yourself um, if anything, like even if you're like me, set on not, or if you were like me, set on not going to school out of state, at least apply, because you never know, you could change your mind. And also, when you do get to school, to just enjoy every minute of it, because it does go by really fast. Next is the W.A. Frankie College of Business. And our College of Business houses our traditional business majors such as marketing, management, and economics. In addition, it houses our very highly ranked School of Hotel and Restaurant Management. You can see some of those bragged rankings there on the screen. And one of the things that is absolutely one of my favorite things to do on campus is to head over to the HRM school and look at what's being cooked up in that test kitchen from, fr from scones to scones and my favorite <laughs> food scones. No, just so many opportunities for students even out of this college to interact and learn. Students in this college get hands-on experience through our Student Management Investment Fund, internships with um, key leaders in the business community around the state, and of course that hands-on experience in the School of HRM with our very own conference center um, in, in collaboration with the City of Flagstaff here on the north part of the Flagstaff campus. So tremendous opportunities 
for students here. Let's go ahead and listen um, to a bit more about the Frankie College of Business from AJ. I've absolutely loved my almost four years in the College of Business so far. I think the business ones specifically promote an environment of professionalism, which is very helpful in the field of business. My favorite class in my major was Management 340, which was titled Business Ethics. I just found it fascinating how they were able to combine a business class with a philosophy class. And it was a class that was almost completely based on discussion because there was no right answer to some situations. So it was just kind of getting to the resolution of what would be the best for most people and that's what you'd have to do as a manager is kind of have to look out for your team and your company as a whole and I think it's good to practice those. It's just so much fun being around the same people and getting to know them and knowing that you're all striving towards the same goal. Last but not least of the eight colleges that we're going to talk about today is our Honors College and who better to tell you about our Honors College than the Dean of the Honors College. So I'm going to throw it over to Dean Gustafson uh, to hear more about the Honors College. Hi, my name is Kevin Gustafson. I'm the Dean of the NAU Honors College and I'm here to invite you to a great academic opportunity here at Northern Arizona University. The NAU Honors College is the small college experience in the middle of a big, bustling research university. Two main features distinguish our innovative curriculum. One is our approach to liberal studies or general education requirements. Instead of taking large introductory lecture courses in various disciplines, students in the Honors College earn liberal studies credits through taking small, discussion-based interdisciplinary seminars on topics ranging from mystery of the brain to culture, race, and democracy to Harry Potter to Game of Thrones. All students at NAU take a three-credit capstone in their major. Honors students take a six-credit capstone. And we encourage students to really think outside the box, to use these projects to meet a specific personal, academic, or professional goal. Some students will do work in their major. Other students do something completely different. They may be an engineer by training, but they have a passion for painting. It's a chance for honors students to have a truly individualized educational experience, one that is geared to meeting their personal, professional, or academic goals. The other pride of the Honors College is our brand new living learning community, which opened in August of 2018. The Honors Residential College has, on the academic side, has seven state-of-the-art classrooms. It has honors advising, a writing center, faculty office, administrative offices, all the things you need to have a truly supportive academic community. The residential side has housing for 620 students with two different types of rooms. A standard double room has two beds, two workspaces, but each double room has its own bathroom in it. The other floor plan has two entrances, two single rooms with a shared bathroom in between. So if you are the kind of student who appreciates small classes with invigorating discussions, who wants a truly individualized educational experience, who appreciates being pushed but also supported as you meet your personal and professional ambitions, then I hope you'll join us at the ANU Honors College. Thank you. I absolutely love hearing Dean Gustafson talk about the Honors College. You can just hear how passionate he is about honors education here at NAU and the experience that we're giving our students. One experience that I, I want to plug and talk about that it's a personal regret of mine that I didn't take advantage of a study abroad experience is studying abroad. I, I want to really encourage students to take advantage of study abroad opportunities and NAU does a great job with study abroad. You can study abroad all around the world, lots of opportunities for that. One program I particularly want to draw your attention to is the Interdisciplinary Global Program, IGP. And with that, it's a five-year program and you end up with two degrees and spend one year abroad. So you're gonna, it's either gonna be a business degree or a STEM degree mixed with a language. So for instance, maybe business in Spanish, and you spend a year abroad in Spain immersing yourself in the culture and in the language. Also our national student exchange, 
Uh, we've got partnerships with institutions around the United States and Canada where you could go there for a semester and maybe check out a potential grad uh, school spot or a city you might want to live on, live in uh, when you complete your degree. But that's enough of me talking about it. I want you to see some of the experience that our students have. So let's take a look at this video. Well, if that video doesn't give you the travel bug, and also one of my greatest um, regrets of my undergraduate career is not taking advantage of those studying elsewhere opportunities. So, so certainly check it out. And you saw our students were having some amazing experiences there. Next, I wanna to talk to you about our number one goal because it involves you as a student in your success. Again, our number one goal is that when you start your educational journey here at NAU, we want you to complete that degree and, and do so in a way that you're gathering experiences that'll last you a lifetime. So to enable students to be successful in the classroom, we have a number of support systems. They are all listed on your screen. And a little different than some other institutions, our career advising and tutoring services are all free for, for all students, which is really important to take note of. We have a number of students that work not only on campus, but around the surrounding community. And that's where Handshake comes into play. Students can upload a resume, even do mock interviews and, and get help with that cover letter for applying for jobs while they're in college or that first job right after they earn their degree. Our peer jacks, mentoring programs and supplemental instruction help to ensure your success in the classroom and get you connected out of the classroom. Because so much of that is about your social fit, as Chad mentioned earlier. One of the biggest mistakes our new students make is not utilizing these services fast enough. So they wait until they get that first midterm grade and maybe it isn't as easy and studying isn't as easy as they thought it would be. And so they wait until that, that point in the semester. Don't wait, take advantage of um, those study groups. And even now that they're meeting remotely on Zoom and in lots of different creative ways, take advantage. Don't just take my word for it though. Here's a couple of our renowned faculty members to give you a little, their little nuggets of advice. Let's take a look. Some general advice for students, don't obsess about your grades. Uh, your grades do not define who you are. Uh, instead, maybe obsess about learning how to learn. If you can develop that, the grades will come. One piece of advice that I could give to NAU students to be successful would be to learn what an informational interview is and to conduct as many of those as you possibly can. There are so many different classes and subjects and topics. Sometimes we get focused on one particular path and don't realize that there are so many other things to explore. If you just work hard, you really work hard, everything else tends to take care of itself. And um, I really believe that, and I've done that in my life, and it's, it's worked for me. Put all these deadlines and due dates in your smartphone or whatever else you use to organize yourself, but also schedule time for, time for friends to go outside and definitely set a time to go to bed and sleep. My best advice for students is to communicate with your professors. The more you communicate with us, the better we can communicate with you. One of the first things you'll see as you come here as a student is that everybody wants to eat up your time because they're hungry for it. 
You gotta defend your space, you gotta defend your time, you gotta defend a sense of who you are. Great advice from our faculty. Um, so we mentioned at the beginning the different types of fit. So we kind of first touched on the academic fit and if you see that yourself uh, fitting in here at NAU. Next up, we're gonna talk about the social fit before finally touching on the financial fit thing. So transitioning to the social fit, one of the big parts of fit is the city you live in, right? So Flagstaff as a college town, uh, I've, I feel lucky to be calling Flagstaff home for the last 12 years. Um, we are much different than the rest of Arizona in many ways. I'm a Minnesota native and I thought all of Arizona was desert and cactus and really hot. We're in the mountains at 7,000 feet elevation, so we do get all four seasons, get a decent amount of snow, but lots of sunshine as well. We are the world's first international dark sky city as well, and with that, we have uh, regulations around light pollution, and the stargazing here is absolutely amazing. The Huffington Post actually named us the best city in the world for stargazing. So while you're here in Flagstaff and at NAU, make sure you're looking up at those night skies. It is absolutely beautiful. Also, outside of the Flagstaff area, lots to explore, and I certainly encourage our students to do so. Many national parks and monuments, just a short drive away from campus. So get out, explore those. Also within the city, our uh, Flagstaff urban trail system, which during this time of social distancing, I have certainly utilized those. Most every night after work, I will get out and explore one of those trails around my community and, and around town and campus. Uh, lots of opportunities to get outside. One, with, with those outside opportunities, certainly we utilize that for our classroom, and many of our classes take place outside, but also recreation as well too. And we're gonna take a look at some of our students uh, checking out Chocolate Falls. Exploration is traveling to a place to learn about it. Here in Northern Arizona, you can find places that take your breath away. These NAU hikes give me a sense of discovery of a place where I belong. Find your place at Northern Arizona University. So great to look at those chocolate falls is just one of the countless areas to explore um, in nor the northern part of this state here and mentioning those urban trails. I've lived here for almost 25 years and found a whole new part of the urban trail the other day while I was out and about on my mountain bike. So just when you think you've seen it all, you find a new section to explore. So, so exciting to be able to do that. Certainly being part of a campus community is living in that community. And most of our new first year students do choose to live on campus. We don't require it, but in any given year, 90% of our new first year students do choose to live in our campus residential halls. It is a two-step process. So once you apply and you're admitted to NAU as an institution, and let us know that you plan to be a lumberjack with us, we ask that you apply for housing. And we do that because um, we organize our residence halls into residential colleges. So you heard Dean Gustafson talk about the honors residential college for our honors students. We have residential colleges and organize those by major throughout campus. So for example, if you're a business major, you'll be housed with other business majors. We know this helps with the student success and getting connected, not only in the classroom, but out of the classroom as well. We also have a number of different housing options for transfer students and, and families as well. So tremendous amount of opportunities there. So we know in this virtual environment, you don't get to join us on campus and see inside a residence hall. So Carolina's here to do that for us in the next video. Hi guys, I'm Carolina. I'm a senior here at NEU. My major is communication science and disorders. Um, I'm gonna be a third year RA in Gabaldon next year. So today I'm just gonna be taking you on a room tour. Cool, so to start off, we're gonna start talking about the beds here. Um, all of the beds are loftable and bunkable and you can adjust them um, for storage. So it takes about three, um, two or three people to adjust the bed, just so you're aware. 
Moving on, um, each student in this space has their own desk and then they also have their own drawer space in the room, <laughs> as you can see. So each room comes with their own closets um, for each student, so there's a lot of space for um, clothing and other valuables. Um, so each room also comes with their own fridge. Um, it's pretty spacious, so just like be courteous to your roommate and just talk about that things, communicate. NU has their own virtual reality that you can go on to the NU website. Um, it's very specific to the room that you're staying in, so just go look that up to see kind of like how your room is set up and then you'll be ready for move-in day. So I want to make mention that none of our residence hall rooms where residents live have glass doors. We have that glass door on that room because it is our showroom that we show when students come to visit us. So I did want to make note of that. I also wanted you to make note of that those refrigerators are fully capable of housing full half gallon ice cream containers. Another favorite of mine. That's an important insight there. Yes, it, it, good to know. It, it's critical. It's not like one of those little tiny refrigerators where you can't do that. Speaking of food, um, next is our on-campus dining options. Most of our students um, have and enjoy one or all of their meals on campus. We have over 25 different retail locations and two all-you-care-to-eat dining facilities. Certainly today those are spread out and we've even included some outdoor dining spaces in many of those. But if you didn't want to go to one of those places, you could use one of the Starship food delivery robots. And as I was on my walkabout around campus today, during lunchtime, I was witnessed to four robots as I was walking on the trail, delivering food to students um, right during lunchtime. So the robots are working very hard right now. Yes. <laughs> the robots are working extremely hard right now. As I mentioned, there's a number of meal plans to choose from and dining dollars. And even as a staff member, um, we choose one of those plans. Um, so we can enjoy whether it's Einstein's or, or coffee at Starbucks or um, in our 1899 bar and grill, which you see there on the screen. But don't take my word for it. Corbin's gonna share with you a couple of his favorites. Let's take a look. Hey everyone, I'm Corbin, just outside of our University Union, where a lot of different dining options are here for students. Here at NAU, we've got 27 different dining options, ranging from Chick-fil-A and Denny's to Einstein Bros bagels and Jamba Juice and anything in between a student can find their liking here on campus. My personal favorite is called The Green Scene. It's on the third floor of the HLC. So once you're here at NAU, definitely come check it out. Thank you, Corbin. Another important thing we want to talk about now is transportation. Getting around campus, getting to and from campus is certainly a common question that we uh, get. You do not need a car. Uh, on campus and a lot of transportation that we have in terms of our campus buses to get around. We're bicycle friendly um, as a campus and we even have our free yellow bike program where you can rent a bike uh, for a couple weeks at a time and utilize that to get around campus and get around the Flagstaff community. Also pictured on this slide is our city bus line, that blue bus uh, that you see there and that cuts through campus and will take you downtown and take you to shopping off campus. As far as the getting to and from campus piece, we're about two hours from Phoenix, and there is the, a shuttle that you can take. Uh, a private company operates a shuttle system that you can take from the Phoenix airport to Flagstaff and get dropped right off on campus. So that's certainly an option. We do have a Flagstaff airport as well. From Flagstaff, you can fly to, down to Phoenix to connect. You can fly to Denver, Colorado, as well as Dallas, Texas. So that's a common question we get. Families want to know how their students going to get to and from campus and get home on the holidays. Uh, so those are some of those options for you. Campus safety is one of our major concerns here on campus. And today that means something quite different than it did even a few short months ago. We want to make sure all students are safe. So that's why we lock our residence halls and students that live in that residence hall use their JAX card or their student ID card to gain access to those halls. One of the most exciting things that I look at almost every day because there's new things being added is our new NAU Safe app. In parents, I did wanna make mention that you can download this app from the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store as well. 
and program it so it gives you the updates for your student specific campus. On that app, students can track their friends to know when they're gonna arrive, maybe if they're meeting um, at the library or grabbing um, a cup of coffee or food together. They can also report um, a crime tip if they saw something um, on campus or around campus. And if they're at the library studying late at night and they're by themselves and they'd like another student to safely socially distance, walk them back to their residence hall, they can request that on that app as well. It's really the one-stop shop or app for all of campus safety needs. So again, parents, you can definitely download this as well. Next, no matter how you identify or the culture you're a part of, there's a place for you here at NAU. From our Native American Cultural Center, one of my very favorite spots on campus, to our student veteran services and disability resources, just to name a few. Our Office of Inclusion has been hosting diversity dialogues all summer long to really help everyone on campus understand the importance of acceptance and respect in this very tumultuous time um, that we've experienced in the last couple months. We want you to feel at home here at the university and are open to feedback and experiences and, and are hopeful to share those across the campus community. So clubs and organizations are something that I would highly encourage students to get involved with. Right now we've got over 400 clubs and organizations and that number has gone up every year I've been here for the, the 12 years I've been at NAU. You know what's crazy too is that those clubs and organizations, even during the socially distant time where they haven't been able to host the big celebrations and meetings that they've been used to, have come up with some tremendous, tremendously creative way to stay connected. Absolutely. And we've got, within those clubs and organizations, sports clubs, you've got fraternity, sorority life, if those are things that are of interest to you, uh, political-based, faith-based, all kinds of clubs and organizations. And if you come here and you realize that you don't find the right club or organization within those 400 plus, you, a handful of your friends, and then a faculty or staff advisor can create a new club or organization. And Sun Entertainment, we're always bringing entertainment here to campus movies, concerts, guest lecturers uh, here. Certainly we're getting creative in this <laughs> time of uh, social distancing to be able to still provide entertainment opportunities uh, for our students. You'll see a picture there uh, of our dive-in movies. That's a pre-COVID time uh, doing the, the dive-in movies in our Olympic-sized uh, swimming pool. I know they did a drive-in one though, I think this fall a couple times already. You're right, so. yep. So athletics is certainly a part of that college experience, cheering on your fellow lumberjacks. We are NCAA division one for our college athletics. Every student with your ID get in free to all the athletic events. We are traditionally very strong in those distance endurance type sports. Being at 7,000 feet elevation, we've got Olympians coming from all around the world to train. And our men's cross country team, certainly a point of pride for us. They won three straight national titles and our women's swimming and diving team, which competes in the WAC, the Western Athletic Conference, has won seven straight WAC titles now. I absolutely love, though, our student athletes get it done not only on the court, on the field, in the pool, but in the classroom, in the community as well. And I want to give you the opportunity to hear from one of our student athletes. So let's throw it to DJ. It's all the classes. It's all the practices. I mean, there's so many points where I, I, really, I really wanted to give up. You know, it was so hard. I just constantly remember my parents saying, if it's, if it's too easy, you know, you're not going to get anything out of it. I can attribute 100% of my success to my parents. Well, my father and I, we both blood, sweat, and tears on the same field. Without NAU, I don't think that I would have the opportunities that I could have in the future. It's really built me and molded me into to what I am now. My name is DJ Arnson. I'm a biomedical science major and chemistry minor, and I'm a lumberjack. So as Chad mentioned earlier, there are really three types of fit. We want to make sure you as a family consider prior to going to any institution. So academic fit, social fit, and the third being financial fit. 
We know that college is a significant investment for the student and the whole family. And we do our best to make sure those costs are predictable. So what you see on the screen are three different tuition rates. One for the residents of Arizona, one for our non-residents, and one for WUE students, W-U-E. And what that stands for is Western Undergraduate Exchange, which I'm gonna explain in just a moment. What you see on the right side of your screen are those additional costs. So, so not things that are necessarily paid to the university, depending on where you choose to live, but things that you need to take into consideration as you're considering the whole cost picture prior to attending any institution. So books and supplies, for example. We know that there are books and supplies that students need each and every term they're enrolled. Sometimes those books and supplies are, are less and sometimes they might be a little more depending on your major and if there's resources to gather online, etc. A number of our faculty really work hard to make sure that those things are, are quite reasonable for students. But things you need to take into account. Now let's get back to that WUI tuition rate. If you reside in one of the yellow highlighted territories or states on your screen, once you're admitted to NAU, you will automatically qualify for that WUI tuition rate. And you see that tuition rate of our current academic year on the screen. All of our tuition rates will be set in mid to late spring by the Arizona Board of Regents. So we will update that information on our websites and our publications, as well as on our slides that, that we're sharing with you when that information becomes available. Important to note here, a number of institutions treat WUI as a scholarship, so an additional application. We do not. You will automatically get this tuition rate once you're admitted to NAU to the Flagstaff campus. So to help with those costs, we have several different scholarship opportunities. And the first one I want to talk about is the top scholarship that we give to our Arizona resident students. We're going to be looking at for a 3.5 or above unweighted core GPA to qualify for the Lumberjack Scholars Award. And we're going to show you the core courses in just a moment. Um, so you'll have an understanding, but it's 16 core courses that we look at for admissions and also utilize for scholarship purposes as well. Also within those 16 core courses, we're looking for no letter grade lower than a B and also no deficiencies in any of those uh, 16 core courses, meaning you took all 16 of those. This is just looking at those courses and the GPA. So ACT uh, scores and SAT scores are not needed for that. And this award is up to full tuition. We have some additional awards as well, which you're seeing on the screen now. For our Arizona residents, for our WUI, those Western Undergraduate Exchange students, and for our true non-residents. Again, we're looking at the unweighted core GPA calculated off of those 16 core courses. And you can see the different levels there that you can be awarded. Want to draw your attention to that test scores are not needed for these scholarships. Uh, we, and, and I know many students, because of the pandemic, maybe their test taking plan was interrupted. Uh, know that you can still be admitted and you also can be considered for scholarships without test scores. That being said, if you have a test score, send it our way. It can only help you, test scores will never hurt you. So if you have one, uh, certainly uh, report that when you are applying. So Chad mentioned those 16 core courses, and that is what you see listed here on the screen. Those four years of English, four of math, three of lab science, two years of social science, with one of those being US American history, two years of the same um, second language in one year of art or CTE. And so that's career and technical education. So lots that can fall under that area as well. As Chad mentioned, test scores are completely optional for you. You don't need them to get admitted to the institution, but as Chad mentioned, they can only help you. So one to make note of that. And if you haven't yet applied, to NAU, you can do so simply by going to nau.edu apply. 
Now we know a number of you that registered with us today have already been admitted to the university. Congratulations. Chad's going to talk through what the next steps are going to be for you to take to secure your spot. Absolutely. So again, I want to echo Annika's congratulations. Those of you that have applied and been admitted to the institution, that's NAU's way of saying yes to you. Your way of saying yes to NAU is by paying that enrollment deposit. So you'll go uh, nau.edu slash accept my offer and pay your enrollment deposit there, $250, uh, to then confirm your spot for this upcoming class. After you've done that, it's going to open up the option for you to do some additional steps. So if you are choosing to live on campus, uh, that housing application will be open uh, this fall, completing priority enrollment, which begins that communication with your academic advisor about uh, exactly confirming what major you want to take. And maybe if you took some uh, AP coursework ahead of time or some college coursework ahead of time, you could report that in there. And then you'll also Register for orientation. Now, this last summer, we did have to pivot to a, a virtual orientation experience, um, and certainly we'll be assessing that, but there will be some sort of orientation experience uh, for you as a student. And for families as well. Absolutely. We know this transition to college is, is significant, certainly for all of you students, but also for you parents and guardians and family members as well. So we do offer an orientation, and that's really what um, that $250 enrollment deposit covers. Um, so there's no additional charges for students or guests to, to attend and experience um, that amazing orientation. Yep, absolutely. And if you're not sure what list of things you need to do, nau.edu slash next steps is going to be the listing of what you need to do. Um, it's been great telling you about NAU. Hopefully... Uh, you've got a sense of if we might be the right fit for you, but there's no better way to find out if uh, we're the right fit than to hear from some more actual students. So we're going to take a little bit of a break here. We're going to wipe down the set uh, here and invite up a couple of our students uh, to join us here and answer some of the questions that you've been emailing in. Great. Thanks so much. Go Lumberjacks. Go Lumberjacks. Go Jacks! This is Northern Arizona University. It's the one with the mountain. Pines, the dome, the lumberjacks. It's the one on the mother road with a hundred years of tradition, which looks like this, that, or this. A unique place where you can learn here or here. It's really beautiful, I love it. It's a community that cares. Because that's what lumberjacks are. See, NAU helps people who can look at microorganisms and see global impacts. People who understand helping one person walk moves us all forward. That opportunity is the only thing that can limit achievement. Lumberjacks stand together, passing traditions onto the next generation, sharing the stuff we love, the moments we remember. It's the pride that shapes the university, that shapes us. This is Northern Arizona University. We are proud, we are loyal, we are Lumberjacks. Welcome back. Lots of great questions were coming in via our email. We've compiled those together uh, into some different themes, and I'll be asking those to some of our real live students that we've got uh, <laughs> joining us here on, on set. And obviously, we want you to have an opportunity to, to meet them and hear some of their story. And let's start by having you each introduce yourself. So Bailey, if you can start off and also in your introduction, share why you chose NAU. All right, perfect. So hi, everybody. My name is Bailey. I am currently a junior here at NAU, and I'm originally from Peoria, Arizona. I'm a biomedical sciences major with minors in chemistry and Spanish, and I'm also in the Honors College, if anybody has any questions about that. Um, I think that the main reason why I chose NAU was because for one thing, they offered me the best deal in terms of scholarship <laughs> opportunities, but it was also far enough away from home that I felt independent, but close enough that if I needed help with laundry, I could still have my mom do it back in Peoria. <laughs> so, yeah. How about you, Gabby? My name is Gabby. I'm a senior studying biology. My pronouns are she, her, and hers. I'm also in the Honors College um, along with Bailey and uh, why I chose NAU is because when I came to NAU touring around, I saw like all the resources that they had to help me and I was a little bit nervous coming from a small town, so I felt like I would be in a very comfortable place, um, somewhere that wouldn't let me 
not succeed. Um, and they also had a really good biology program, um, which is why I chose NAU. Great. So our first question that I'm going to start with here is something you wish you knew before going to college. And Bailey, it sounds like doing laundry might be <laughs> one answer to that question. But Biggest uh, one. Any, any other uh, answers to something you wish you knew before going to college? I think for me, one of the biggest things that I totally forgot about any of you before coming here was that in Flagstaff, there's weather. Um, <laughs> there's not weather back where I come from. It's if it's winter, the cacti turn from green to brown and, you know, so on and so forth. So um, it was definitely just learning how to dress for the winter that I wish I knew a little bit more before I decided to come up here and what I've decided is it's all about layering, just putting, say, a T-shirt on and then putting a hoodie over that, putting a flannel over that, some jeans, and then I can pretty much withstand whatever weather uh, NAU has to throw at me. So, yeah, I would definitely say the weather for my answer. How about you, Gabby? Uh, I would say that I wish I knew that the professors actually did want you to come to office hours and there wasn't a huge line out the door. Um, all my professors, when I got here, started encouraging us a lot to go to office hours, but I was a little bit nervous. Um, so I would say that I wish I just knew not to be so nervous, that they were there to help, and I would have not waited so long to go to professor office hours. That's great advice. What surprised you about NAU when you arrived? You talked about the weather a little bit, but any, anything else that surprised you uh, when you got to campus? Yeah, I think for me, the biggest surprise that I found in college is that the role that tutoring has to play in success in your classes, because I know that there's a common stigma in high school that the students that need tutoring are the ones that aren't doing well in the class. It's the complete opposite in college. And in fact, um, a recent study showed that students that decided to go to the, our free tutoring options that we have here on campus actually had a grade level higher than the people that didn't. Um, and so the best people in the classes are the ones that are succeeding the most academically are actually the ones taking advantage of those, you know, optional tutoring hours and all of the free, you know, resources that we have here on campus uh, academically. So that, that's one thing that definitely surprised me was just how different it is from high school in terms of going out and seeking those tutoring opportunities. Anything you'd add to that, Gabby? Uh, yeah, I would say I was surprised with the how like small town the community felt. Um, I NAU is like itself is bigger than where I grew up, so I was a little bit nervous that there'd be so many people and I'd kind of like get lost in the numbers. But walking around, I would see people from my residence hall all the time. I would see a lot of friendly faces going to class or in my classes um, that you can talk to and become friends with. Here's a, a Flagstaff question. What's your favorite thing to do around Flagstaff? Gabby, I'll start with you. We'll switch okay. it up here. <laughs> um, my favorite thing to do in Flagstaff is like hiking and camping. So I'm a big like outdoorsy person. So that's been really fun um, while living here. And Flagstaff is just being really close to all of the trails in Sedona. I mean, for me, the biggest thing that I like to do when it comes to downtown Flagstaff or leaving campus is just go eat. I love food. And so Flagstaff has so many great local places to eat. Um, a couple off the top of my head are Fratelli's and DeMarco's. Fratelli's is better in my opinion, but that's kind of controversial. Um, we've also got a bunch of different, you know, Italian places, Mexican restaurants, so on and so forth. And so regardless of what type of food you're looking for, you can probably find a really nice place for it in downtown Flagstaff. I know that that's one of the biggest surprises for me, at least, was how many good places there were to eat off campus. Um, so yeah, that's that's something that I really love about downtown Flag. I, I would second that. Lots of great restaurants <laughs> yeah. uh, around Flagstaff, and if, even if you're not going there as a student, when your parents come to visit, certainly uh, have them take you out to some of those local Flagstaff eateries. So shifting back to the academics again. Uh, the student is nervous about academics in college. Any study tips? We kind of talked about tutoring and some different things like that, asking for help, but anything around study tips, maybe staying organized, those types of things we can talk to? Yeah, so I guess I'll go first. Um, my biggest tip is just don't procrastinate on your work and go to class. Um, I know that now that you have the independence that you have in college, it can be tempting to say, you know, I'm a little tired. I don't really feel like going to class today, so I won't go. 
and nobody's going to be able to stop you if you decide that. Your professors aren't going to stop you. Your parents won't be there to stop you. But what I will say is that going to class really was the make or break between whether I got an A in a class or a B in a class my first year on campus. It was about getting out of bed every morning and staying motivated and you know committing fully to my academics and that meant going to class and that definitely helped me a lot in terms of how well I did academically my first year and I'm sure that it would for you too. Yeah. For me, um, what I do is on I'll focus like week by week so I'll put all of my assignments in my planner for the week and then I'll write the due dates a day before they're actually due so that way I get them done beforehand and I'm not like cramming it in the day before it's due um, and then also when I'm studying and I have like a big test I'll take like five minute breaks every like 30 minutes or so so I don't overwork myself and can stay focused. Great. So talking about student involvement here the question is what clubs or organizations are you involved with and Gabby I'll start with you. Uh, yeah, the um, biggest club that I was involved with, it was Pre-Vet Club, which was super fun. So we got to go on field trips to like pet sanctuaries and we even learned how to vaccinate dogs and do microchips and the guy running it um, taught us a lot about different like medical um, issues that his dogs were having. He showed us different diseases because um, he also took care of a lot of sick dogs at the sanctuary. And then he taught us a bunch of like behavior tips and stuff. And um, we learned a lot from that. And then we even got to talk one on one with vets um, who also taught us things about um, different skills. And we did suturing labs. So that la uh, club was super fun um, to be a part of because we got to do a lot of like hands-on learning and labs and talking to um, real vets. Yeah, kind of along the same lines, I'm currently interested in going to medical school after I get done with my undergrad, and so I'm actually involved in the pre-med club. Um, and very similar along the lines of the pre-vet club, we got a lot of hands-on experience, everything from you know learning how to do IVs to you know just a lot of hands-on experience. Suturing is another big thing that we learn how to do in that club. and. Kind of just preparation for the MCAT and preparation for applying to med schools, stuff like that. And for me, that's really stressful to think about. I like to take my days one day at a time. Um, and so with that being said, being a part of that club and kind of getting that hands-on experience and also kind of getting ahead on what I need to be doing later and getting prepared for that, that helped me a lot and kind of eased my nerves in terms of my future. So. So it sounds like both of you are really involved in some sort of academic focused uh, club or organization, but certainly with about 400 clubs and organizations, mm -hmm. lots of uh, sports clubs and interest based things, political based, faith based, mm -hmm. all, all those different types of things uh, that students can get involved with as well. But certainly good to be getting that uh, real world practical experience there. So kind of along the same lines of getting involved, uh, what's the, the best way to meet people on campus and, and make friends? Any advice that you'd give there? Bailey, I'll start with you here. Yeah, so I actually took part in a program called the EDGE Leadership Program um, prior to me actually starting my first year at NAU. And basically what that is, is it was about a week and a half, a week long kind of just training camp more or less on how to get better at public speaking and leadership skills and you know learning how to engage different people with different interests which has definitely helped me with this job but on top of that it was a really great way to get plugged in before i even moved into my residence hall and on top of that i got to move into my residence hall early and one of my favorite things in that program was i actually got to help other students move in which Sounds like a lot of work. It wasn't really that much work, but it was a great way to meet, you know, new people because as weird as it sounds, you move somebody in and you're like, hey, I know where you live now. Let's hang out, you know? And so it was definitely a great way to kind of get plugged in as early as possible. And I would highly recommend it for anybody interested. For me, it was um, going to events on campus. So during Welcome Week, there will be a lot of like uh, different events that you can go to to meet students. And uh, my first few days living on campus, I wasn't, I, there was an event that I was interested in. I wasn't sure if I should go or not. Um, so I was like, you know what, I'm just going to go by myself and meet people. And that was like the best thing I could have ever done. And I met some friends that I still am friends with now my senior year. And um, also joining those clubs that um, are like based on your interest as well. Like for me, I'm also part of a faith-based club. So I met a lot of friends through that as well. Great. 
always transportation questions that come in for panels, whether it be, you know, do you need a car, parking, mm -hmm. how do you get around campus? If uh, you could speak a little bit to that just in general, as far as uh, transportation goes and getting around campus. Yeah, so I guess I'll go ahead and just touch on the car question on whether or not you should bring a car, because I actually did choose to bring a car my first year on campus. Um, and that was a choice that I made because, I, you know, just in case I ever needed to go back down to the valley, you know, let's say I need to get my laundry done or something along those lines, um, I would be able to have that mode of transportation with me. It would be my vehicle. But what I will say is it's definitely a luxury. It's not a necessity on campus. The campus itself is only about a mile and a half long and half a mile wide. And so with those measurements, you really don't need a car or a vehicle to get from one side of campus to the other. It takes about 20 minutes walking. You could bring a bike, a skateboard. You could even take, you know, the bus system that we have on campus, which is also great. But along those lines, I feel like if you need to find a way home and you don't have a car on campus, there are tons of resources that we have um, available that you're able to utilize in order to get home. And on top of that, if you need transportation around downtown Flagstaff, or you know anything like that even around campus just mooch off your friends because that's what my friends did with me and it <laughs> seemed to work perfectly well for them so yeah anything to um, add to that gabby yeah i would agree with bailey i had a car my freshman year too um and i definitely was the friend who like took their friends to the grocery store and stuff like that um, which was still fun and then also most of the time we all just wanted to walk to target so we would just walk together anyway even though i did have a car um, because it was like lo located right behind our residence hall at the time and um, now as a senior i live off campus even and i still prefer to ride my bike um, which i got at the abandoned bike sale that we have every year so every year all the bikes that get left um, and abandoned on campus they sell them for really cheap so me and a friend we bought one and then we renovated it um, and restored it and so now i just ride my bike to campus and that's super fun and a great way to get outside before you're in class so great yeah so definitely a luxury more than a need on the mm -hmm. car piece uh to to get around campus and it's not like you're driving to class if you're on yeah. campus your car kind of sits so it's more so those off-campus uh type trips where you'd be utilizing uh your car so obviously a, a lot of high school students are doing a lot of thinking around what major should they be and that type of thing um why did you choose the major you did and was it hard choosing a major um, Bailey, I'll start with you. Yeah, so I actually decided um, kind of on a whim to pursue biomedical sciences. I didn't really know what I wanted to do when I first chose NAU, and they made me fill out priority enrollment, and they were like, what are you interested in? And I was like, I don't know. I like Grey's Anatomy, so biomedical sciences, I guess. <laughs> um, and so that's kind of what I rolled with. And I was very lucky and fortunate that what I first chose is what I've stuck with, and I've fallen in love with that, you know, study field and the professors and the faculty have all been great, but I've known plenty of people that have had a hard time choosing their majors when they first come to college, and that's okay, because at the end of the day, college is where you find out what those interests are, and that's where you learn to pursue those interests. And if you have to change your major, then honestly, good for you, because you're pursuing what you actually wanna pursue, and NAU is not gonna do anything to hold you back because of that. Um, we do everything that we can here to make sure that you get out in four years, regardless of how many times you change your major. So definitely talk with your advisor if you're interested in changing your major when you do come up here or even before you come up here, if you're trying to make that decision for yourself. Yeah, for me, I uh, applied as psychology um, and then I realized I didn't really know what that meant and I wasn't sure if I was interested in it. And so I talked to my parents about it, like saw asking like, oh, what do you think I could do? What do you think I'd be interested in? And my dad was like, oh, well, if I could go to college again, I would probably major in anthropology. And I was like, oh, that kind of sounds cool. I will guess I'll just change it to anthropology. And then I went to a like academic presentation about anthropology and I was like, actually, this is not for me at all. Um, and so I changed my major again. And then I asked my friends, like, what do you think I would be good at doing and my friend was like why would you choose anthropology or psychology she was like you were so good at science why don't you choose something involving science so I looked into that and I chose biomedical sciences originally and then um, about my sophomore year I was like I do not know what pre-med path I want to be in I don't know exactly like where I want to go with biology 
um, or biomed. And so then I ended up talking to my advisor and chose biology instead because um, it gave me a little bit more flexibility with choosing like each bio class like and exploring like each like the pre-vet classes and the pre-med classes and all of those things. Um, so now I'm finally settled on biology, which is great. <laughs> so, so definitely can be a process mm -hmm. and it's it, for any student uh, watching that doesn't know what they want to study, that's normal yep. uh, as well too. And we'll help you uh, figure that out. And also talking to friends, family, advisors, um, all of those are great resources to figure out what you want to study. So Gabby, I'm gonna throw this question to you. How safe is NAU's campus? Uh, I would say that it's very safe. So I lived on campus for two years and then now I'm living off campus. I've never ran into any troubles or never felt unsafe um, walking on campus, um, especially knowing that we do have lots of resources on campus if you ever do feel unsafe. So if you ever visit Flagstaff and see campus, you would see like a bunch of blue lights. So those are um, all over campus and wherever you are, you should be able to see one. And if you press that, then it will contact uh, NAUPD immediately. And then um, they will come to you and make sure everything's okay. And then you can also call them and they have volunteers um, called Campus Safety Aid and they will walk you back to your residence hall or where you're living. Um, and I've known a few friends who have done that just because they didn't want to walk alone at night or they wanted to ride home in the cold. Um, but yeah, those are there and that definitely makes me feel a little bit better and made my parents feel better, especially. Um, so yeah. Great. What advice would you give an incoming student? What would be the biggest piece of advice? I would probably say that my biggest piece of advice when it comes to being a student is focus on being a student first. I know that when most people come to college for the first time, they want to branch out as much as they can, join as many clubs as possible, look for a job, stuff like that. Um, and what I would recommend is just focus on your studies because at the end of the day, you're a student first. Um, and because of that, make sure you're staying organized, make sure that you're doing well in your classes, make sure that you understand the workload that you have and accommodate for that before you try to overextend. Because my first year I overextended and it nearly really had an effect on my academics. And so take your academics seriously. And then once you've settled down, once you've kind of gotten the swing of things, that's when you start to branch out and look for all those other opportunities. So that's what I would recommend. I would definitely recommend um, similar, um, but also just take one day out of the week to just not do any homework, not think about school, and go out and go on a hike with friends or watch Netflix all day, um, whatever makes you like re-energize yourself. Um, I would definitely recommend doing that so you don't burn yourself on school as well. Um, and just like have that balance. And then also like definitely bring a planner and definitely learn how um, you keep organized personally because everyone's a little bit different with how um, they stay organized and on top of their assignments. So last question here. Uh, what do you wish everyone knew about NAU? Or kind of maybe what was your, what's your favorite thing about NAU that you, you wish everyone knew um, about NAU? Let's start with uh, you, Gabby. Um, I wish everyone knew um, how like caring the professors are about students and their success and how like caring even like um, higher faculty is like the like the dean of honors even came into one of our classes one time and was really encouraging to us because we were all kind of freaking out about our capstone and how we were going to get our projects done um, and we weren't really sure like how to plan it out and stuff like that and he personally came into our class and talked to all of us and encouraged us and gave us lots of advice so that was like really helpful to me and kind of gave me that like oh this is why i love nau moment yeah so for me probably my favorite thing or the thing that i wish everybody knew about nau was how much nau wants you to find a home here and i think that nau's focus on you know diversity and inclusion is one of its best aspects i think that regardless of who you are where you're coming from what you believe in anything along those lines you can find somewhere where you belong here and that goes that's a testament to the 400 clubs that we have i mean one of the clubs that we have they literally sit around a table and try to finish a head of lettuce the fastest <laughs> but if that's what you want and that makes you feel like home 
then we have that for you. We have one of the few Native American cultural centers in the nation. Um, and I can go on and on and on about all of the different, you know, resources and programs that we have to make sure that the minute that you set foot on campus, you know that you have a place on campus. And that's definitely what I felt when I first came to NAU. I you know a ton of other people that felt the same way. And I'm sure that eventually, you know, more people will as well. The more people set foot on the campus, I'm sure the more people will find a home here. And that just goes to a testament of how welcoming and inclusive and diverse NAU's campus really is. All right, well, thank you so much for taking some time to answer questions uh, with us today, uh, Bailey and Gabby. Um, as always, I wish we had more time to keep answering your questions. Lots of great questions uh, came in, but certainly feel free to reach out to us as admissions and we'll uh, continue to answer questions uh, that you may have. Uh, stay tuned. Annika and I are going to be back on set here in a moment, uh, but we're going to take a little bit of a, a break here and wipe down the set and then we'll be back out. What we're trying to figure out is relationships between communities of microbes that live in mammal guts and Alzheimer's symptoms. Being able to possibly reduce patients and family suffering by learning more about the disease mechanisms would be tremendously satisfying. My name is Chris and I'm a lumberjack. Thank you again for joining us for this morning's Discover NAU. Remember, we like those three types of fit, academic, social, and financial, and your student success is our number one priority. We know we presented a lot of information, so if you want to review any of the videos or visit us virtually, you can do so at nau.edu slash virtual. A ton more videos from our students, faculty, and other team members to help you understand if NAU could be the right fit for you. Regardless, we wish you the best of luck in a successful academic year, and thank you again for joining us. Absolutely. And if you've got individual questions, certainly reach out to, on email admissions at nau.edu. And also, we are willing to schedule individual appointments with you, be it over Zoom or over the phone. And you can do that by emailing admissions.appointment at nau.edu. And we're happy to sit down virtually with you as a family and talk through any of those things that can help determine if NAU is that right fit for you. Um, again, thank you so much for joining us. Be safe, be healthy, and we hope to see many of you on campus in the future. Go Lumberjacks! <laughs>